Hey guys, how you doing? This is another FT Speaks episode from me, Leroy Kenton. Probably missed my face. Well, you probably see me every single day. Either way, uh, we have another video of a woman. We've reacted to one of her videos before actually where the jinn uh, scared her and then she found Islam that way. So I recognize it from the thumbnail. I haven't seen this video yet, but she's asking or I guess answering the, the question of why there is no female imams. And that's a question that I have too. Like, why? Why is that? So let's take a look at this video together and then see what we learn. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Naila Edwards. I came across this video on BBC Radio 4 Women's Hour where Zara Mohammed, the newly elected Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain, was being interviewed. And uh, I'm just going to have a watch because everybody's been talking about this. Oh, how many uh, female imams are there? Um, I, in, in the um, UK at the moment, just because you, I presume we, we, we'll get to this more, but representing, of, of course, women, uh, which you will do as part of this. How many do we have in Britain? I mean, I think, again, I'm not, I, I wouldn't have a clue on these numbers because my role is making sure that we include our affiliates, particularly women, in the work that we are doing and making sure that um, we're, our structures, as well as the work we do, um, are truly representative. So I think that, do, you know, do we, sorry, you don't know, that's, that's fine if you don't know, but do, do we have female imams in this country? I mean, again, it's not, what, are you referring? I really have a problem with this kind of journalism because she's already answered that she doesn't actually know the answer to that question. And it feels like it's really prodding and Zara's answering and holding herself really well, mashallah, um, such a difficult situation to be put in. I think she she sees that she's trying to be, you know, egged into a debate that she doesn't right. really want to get involved with and she's handling it really well. And I don't like it when reporters keep asking the same question because sure, they want either. a specific answer. So let's see what else she says now. Chaplains, are you referring to women that lead the prayer? What are you referring to? And I think well, you tell me. I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely intrigued to know. Of course, uh, female priests have been around for some time. Uh, we've also uh, seen the, the advent of female rabbis in this country. Well, what is the picture for women leading prayer in Britain in in Muslim communities? Well, I think my role isn't really to um, adjudicate or to, to examine that part of, of spirituality. I think where women want to make those choices and where, you know, that these are all religious discussions. Oh, no, no, Muslim of course. It was, it, it was just, I thought, because the Muslim Council of Britain's played such an important role in getting the number of Muslims, for instance, added to the census. I mean, that was done at the turn of, of the turn of the century. So we actually knew how many Muslims there were. Do we, so do we have female imams? I think what <laughs> Those two points don't, they don't make any sense together. The Muslims on the consensus and knowing how many Muslims there are and then keep going back to like women leading prayer. I mean, the important thing I think we need to note is women have been scholars and teachers and leaders in the academic and the, you know, the spiritual uh, education sector in Islam since the very beginning. Yeah. Aisha herself, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated over 2000 hadiths. She taught countless men who went on to be scholars and leaders in their own communities as well, you know, to keep picking and at something that maybe isn't an issue, but is trying to be made into an issue just to spark some sort of controversy. And again, Zara's doing a really good job at just kind of redirecting it to what the MCB actually does focus on. The important for the Muslim Council of Britain, the work that we do is actually that it's not about defining, you know, or going into the, these types of questions regarding spirituality, but actually looking at how we can benefit our communities, especially given the pandemic and given of course. the role that everybody needs to be playing. And, and, and think, we will get to know, we will get to the pandemic. It's just quite striking that you, you can't sort of answer that question. I recognise it's not a, a religious or spiritual role. Exactly. I don't feel like that's within the parameters of my roles and responsibilities, especially as, you know, the first elected female representative. I mean, I would have asked a man, but I, I'm asking you because well, you're here. <laughs> I'm really proud of Zara. She she held strong um, in probably what was one of the more, or one of the first even very controversial sort of interviews she's been involved with. I mean, we're so proud 
to have her and having more female representation representation in the you know Muslim run organizations that really stand up for our rights and really really push um, our communities and our needs and and the issues that we're facing into the forefront. I know myself many Muslim female chaplains um, you know which would sort of be the same sort of level that she's she's trying to get to but um, I think that was handled really well and I think it's important to know that women are very strong um, religious teachers and scholars education and Islamic teaching by women 100% important in our communities so guys, this episode became a reaction video of somebody reacting to a video. And uh, interesting what I what I just saw. It, it's like the woman answered the question and it, the reporter came back to try to have her answer the question. And, and I get it seemed pretty uh, well-intentioned or I guess the reporter tried to make it seem very well-intentioned. But uh, just like the woman in the video reacting to the video, I had my little suspicions of like, hmm, why does she keep bringing that up? Like, is that an important thing? Is there like a, a specific answer that she's looking for? Is she trying to make up an issue to like push some sort of narrative? Um, uh, I I think because Imam is just uh, one type of leadership. Uh, I, there's other types of uh, leadership in Islam and the thing is I'm I only know of male Imams but I've never looked at that as like is that a problem like a woman aren't allowed to be Imams or like it's something that is like um, even a big 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 topic it's just something I've wondered even at the beginning of this video I said that like hmm it's a question I've asked you know I wonder it too so I could see, I guess, where the question could come from, but just bringing it up so much. Like, she just said, I don't know. And I'm like, why keep trying to get her to answer a question that she literally says, I don't know. I know she didn't want to be confrontational because I think, you know, in getting confrontational, it would just have made the thing escalate completely. And sometimes, you know, people don't want to be dragged into debates and have to debate. It's just like, no, that's not why I'm not here to debate. A debate, we'll have a debate if, you know, and when time calls for that. But in this situation, it's just, are there male or female imams? No. Okay, <laughs> continue on to another point. Like, why are you stuck on that one? But if you want to debate about it, um, I think what she could have said too is, if you'd like to discuss this in more detail, you know, I can happily bring you to people or talk about this uh, in another setting with you. I think that's one thing that she could have said too. But, you know, sometimes when you're on the spot, not all the points kind of come to your brain and uh, you don't necessarily say every single thing that you would have said um just after you remember back like oh yeah i should have said that or i could have said this i'm well aware of uh females and their impact in the religion of islam from the time of prophet muhammad you know his wife khandija uh aisha was mentioned uh there's many others even to this day many uh females uh, muslim speakers who are doing a lot of great work in the community and you know helping to share islam with the world and uh and, and the mass public you know so so they're there, you know, they're, they're teaching people, they're sharing the faith, they're there, female leaders are there. Um, whatever specific titles you want to give them, I don't know necessarily how the makeup of Islam works, but at the same time, it's just like, if you want to find out about somebody, just ask the questions. I get journalism, a lot of it is sensational and you know looking to get like that that new buzz headline of like oh an elected muslim official female muslim official uh gets angry in interview and say oh see see look you know i so i i kind of know certain tactics of the media but you know i'll end off right there let me know what you guys thought about this video do you think that the interviewer was really trying to push uh for a particular narrative or do you actually believe her when she says that oh she was actually genuinely intrigued and generally curious to know about this regardless of what you think i'm definitely not going to judge you so sound off down below in the comment section freely and if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like 
Also, if this is your first time here at FTV Speaks, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted. We explore topics like this, as well as topics related to other religions, culture, and more. See you guys in the next one. Later.